if you're trying to learn CSS and you're using Chrome, you are doing yourself a disservice. We're going to be seeing why in this video. Hi there, my name is Kevin, and if you're new here, this channel is all about learning how to make the web and how to make it look good with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials. In this video, we are going to be exploring Firefox's dev tools because recently I put a tweet up that got a lot more attention than I was expecting it to, and a lot of people seem to take it as a personal attack on them. Not a lot. I mean, a lot of people were like, oh, really? But A, that was surprised with how many people weren't aware that Firefox's CSS inspectors were so good. And I think some JavaScript people were sort of offended that I might attack Chrome because really Chrome is great when it comes to that side of things. But for CSS, Firefox is literally leaps and bounds above where Chrome and other browsers are. Let's check out why in this video. So here we are inside VS Code. And of course I do have a Firefox open here because you know, that's what we're taking a look at. So before we, we get into why you should be using them, it is very similar to Chrome. You can right click and you can do a nice little inspect element. Or if you're the type of person who likes shortcuts, you can do a shift command I if you're on a Mac, or if you're like me and you're on Windows, you can do a shift control I and it will pop open something that looks a little bit like this. Now we're by default in the inspector mode here. And what's really cool with this, um, I'm actually going to zoom in. Uh, I'm gonna move stuff around here a little bit. We're gonna play around with different stuff in here, but uh, just for the video, I'm gonna do a command plus, And I think what I'm actually gonna do just to make this bigger is separate window it um, and bring it up over everything like that so we can really see what we're doing. All right, so I've never had my dev tools taking up this much of my screen before, but it's gonna make it a little bit easier for all of you to see what's actually going on. Um, so if we take a look in here and of what's going on, the very first thing I want to look at is tool tips that show you when things are not working. So I did something really silly and on my button here, I tried to put a width and a height. And if we come and scroll down, we're seeing that width and height aren't working. And what I really love with Firefox is when something is a valid property, but it doesn't work, most of the time it tells you why. So I'm going to click on this little guy here and then I'm just going to click on my buy now and it highlights it. And if we come and look and I find, I put it within a height and they're not working and I go, why? Well, look, we get a little tool tip here. We get this little eye. So it's not just saying like, if you, you know, if you misspelled something like here, you're getting a little warning saying that uh, invalid property name. So that's saying that this just doesn't work because it doesn't know what it is. But when I hover on top of the eye, you can see height has no effect on this element since it has a display of inline. Try adding display inline block. And really cool, they give you a learn more that you can click on. And if you do click on more to bring you to the MDN article that talks about height itself. So it might not always bring you somewhere uh, that gives you an answer, but it's pretty cool that they try and help you like that. So with, we can see the same thing right there. So I love that, but not me. <laughs> you might be going, Kevin, I know not to give widths and heights to buttons. You should just use some padding. So let's fix that padding. Uh, I don't know, we'll do 1M, 2M, make a really big button. And there's my very big button. Um, but let's say it's another situation where I wanted these to be two columns. And if we come in, we take a look up here, you can see I did uh, my min width 600 pixels, and I'm pretty sure I'm bigger than that. And I did, man, I'm doing my flex direction row. Why is it not working? And this is infuriating me. And I can't figure it out. I grab this little guy, click there, make sure I grab my calls. And then if I find that, uh, here we go, flex direction row. Flex direction has no effect on this element since it's not a flex container. Try adding display flex. You go, what? I forgot to add display flex. That's weird. Um, there's two times this might come up. So this was in a media query and I sort of did that on purpose to say maybe you forgot to put it over here to start with. Um, or it could be even if you had to display flex, but maybe you did display flex or something like that. And you made a silly typo and it's still not working. This can really help you out in actually finding it because obviously we're getting this here, but right there you're going, I'm sure I did. Um, but you look up and then you're sort of, oh, I made a little silly typo. <laughs> so you can come there and fix it. And then you get the two columns that you're hoping for something like that. So these little tool tips. And again, this is if you're trying to learn CSS, these types of things are lifesavers and explaining, you know, I know I'm using a valid property and now you're telling me that it is valid, but this is why it's not working. How amazing is that? If you're trying to learn something and you get these little hints along the way, it is absolutely amazing. Now, something that wasn't part of my original tips that I was in my script, but you'll also notice here now I get this little flex that shows up. So it's really cool here in um, the DOM. It actually shows you when something's a flex container. If you had grid, it would show you that it's a grid container. And also let's go in section two just really fast. Um, you can see it says event. And if I click on that, it tells me that 
Uh, it's a click event and I can actually get more. I can see the function that happens when I click on it. I can see that it's bubbling in a bit more. So that can also be really, really cool and really, really handy uh, that you have your events and your flex and grid all showing up. Um, in here in your DOM. So that is a nice little. All right. So next up after that um, is something that's really, this is as someone who likes typography, this is really handy. Uh, if you'll notice here, so this is my DOM. Here's where I have all my style stuff. And then here we have like all these different things we can look at. Um, one of the coolest ones here that Firefox has is the fonts. I'm not even going to get to the top. You can see it is actually listing the different fonts that are used. And I'm going to skip this part here <laughs> and scroll down because you can actually see all the fonts that are on the page. Um, and you get the information on those fonts. Now I only have two in this specific page, but um, actually let's just go and check out my actual website. So here on my site, if I go over to the fonts tab, let's just move some comparison. If I go to my fonts here and I scroll down a little bit, all fonts on page, um, you can see here it actually lists everything that I'm using. So basic styles once again, um, you can see that I also have the Marydale, even though when you're looking here, you're not seeing it right away and it's because it eventually pops up there. Um, and I have the emoji UI, huh, did not know I was using that. I wonder where I'm using that. Hmm. Interesting. I'll have to check out, <laughs> check that out. So just learn something new about my own site. I'm going to leave this open actually for a little bit later. Um, but one of the other things, so that's cool. You can just easily identify any font that's being used and uh, super nicely. And as we saw here, we can even highlight where different fonts are just by hovering on top of those. So if I come down, uh, so I can see I have my, uh, the saws and the black here at the top. So you can highlight the different fonts and find where they're really being used on the page. Um, but I think my favorite thing here is this cool thing. Um, so we have the size. So let's go and actually we're going to select this guy right here. So we're selecting that heading. And here even actually let's go to the paragraph. You're going to see it's telling me the font size used, the line height, all the information for that paragraph. And if I go over to my title here, cool title, it's all the information about that uh, is popping up right there. Don't know... <laughs> So I find that's really, really interesting. Um, and you can just use this slider and actually see how it would affect your page. Now, one thing with this is it is doing it as an inline style. So it wouldn't affect like all your H2s or all the class like that. It's only going to be the one element that you've selected, but I still think that's pretty cool. You can play with your line height and see how that's going to affect things directly in the browser. Uh, of course, the letter spacing, you can just you know go crazy with it um, and get a real idea of how things work and the weight. Um, you'll notice here on the weight, I've loaded in pretty much everything because this is just a demo site um, that I put together, but some sites where they only have like a 900 and 400 available, as you're sliding it around, this isn't gonna work. Um, it's just gonna jump when it gets to the next available one, but it's pretty cool that you can sort of experiment like that. And even, ooh, I have the italics in there too, uh, which don't look so good there in all caps. Um, but it's so cool, I find that you can experiment and play around with the fonts like that. That's really, really neat. Now, if you are playing around with this, obviously, you know, this is sort of similar that maybe you've come into things and toggled stuff and played around with different things here. And, uh, you know, one of the most frustrating things with that is when you're playing with all these and then you accidentally refresh the page because you want something, you lose all those changes you made and you go, oh, oh no, I wanted to copy paste that. I completely forgot. So one really cool thing that I could recommend is the style editor right here. And if you come in there, it pretty much just brings you right into the um, you know, the code <laughs> You're, it brings you into the CSS, um, sheet pretty much, or that's all my font face stuff. Here we go. Styles. Um, so we can see there's a media query and I can see the CSS that's written, but what's really nice here is I could come in and so let's find my cool title and let's just say I changed color to red here. You can see it's changed live. I didn't have to do anything else, but as soon as you make a change, you'll notice here it says save and I can just click on that and it's going to ask me if I want to save that as an external, you know, I could save that as my style sheet. So if I came through here and I was making a whole bunch of changes for something, um, for, for whatever reason, I just decided not to go back into my actual editor because I was playing around with a whole bunch of stuff and then I actually liked what I had. Uh, you can hit save. Now, one thing with this style editor is it's not perfect. If you hit refresh, everything is gone. So you still do have to remember to hit save um, and play around with that. But again, you, oh, a uh, nice thing with the media query is if you click on it, it enables that media query. So you can actually see what's happening there. Um, but uh, the, yeah. Um, yeah, if I refresh now, I will lose those changes. So just, you know, do make sure if you are doing stuff here to hit that little save button, but it's a little bit safer than, you know, if you're toggling or playing around with stuff here. 
Now, one of the other things I really like in here is the accessibility uh, tab. So I'm actually going to go to my site. And we're going to check this out. We'll see if I have any accessibility issues. <laughs> I probably have a couple, um, but I'm trying to get better at this. So if I go turn on accessibility features, it's going to enable it and it makes it this, uh, you know, it's going to look through. It gives me my document so you can actually see like I have my document. Oh, uh, we want it for this guy here. So actually, <laughs> so shift command I accessibility. There we go. Uh, Kevin Powell. And if I come and look in here, I can see the landmark, which is my nav. So it's just, it's not telling me what it is, but it's saying it's a landmark. And then actually I see there's an issue right away because all these are sections and I have a landmark at the end. I didn't wrap this in a main tag. So that means that here I don't have like a landmark for my main part of my body, which could be a bit of an issue for screen readers um, along the way. So I probably want to wrap that up. Now I think sections that have headings in them sort of become landmark-ish or something like that. but. Um, it would probably be safer if I actually put a main around all of that just to create another uh, landmark along the way. Um, and you can sort of see how things are broken up and there's text containers and, you know, you get an idea of how a screen reader might go through and what they're seeing and all the different things um, that are coming through on that. This isn't really the best part of all of this. Um, if you come here and you click on this, so that might be if you're on the inspector, you know, you can grab stuff like that. If you're on the accessibility one and you click this guy and you go on something, this is where you can get um, similar to Chrome where it gives you the contrast ratio. So you can see that I'm getting a good contrast on those. If I come onto this text, my contrast is good. It's black text. I should hope so. Um, but these ones, oh, that's actually not bad. Hmm. That's probably because the font is big enough. Um, but on some of these texts, I think uh, my navigation is actually going to give me some warnings. So you can see there I'm getting warnings on a couple of the colors that I have set up here in my navigation, for example. So that could be interesting um, to note. So it's just a little like accessibility searcher, which is really, really neat and highlights stuff for you. Um, so that is nice. Now, I'm not an accessibility expert by any means, but I am trying my best here uh, to be good at it. Um, so you can actually check for issues. This does say it's in beta, but you could just go, I want all issues or just contrast keyboard or text labels. So if I go to all issues, I will get some for sure. Um, and they're all pretty much relating to contrast. So I should probably watch out on my site um, and just make sure that my contrast is meeting the standards across the board. And I think if I go to my courses, I have some issues here, which I already knew about and um, I haven't yet fixed, which is shame on me. Uh, so let's go to all issues and I should get some things about, here we go, keyboard and text labels. So here I have a form that, here it is, um, it doesn't have any label on it. I just have placeholders in there. So that is a big no-no. So it is saying here that, oh, I have two things. Um, there's a keyboard warning and a text label warning. So it's saying that focusable element may be missing focus styling and form elements should have a visible text label. Hmm. So there's two things I could do to improve my site that are really, really easy to do. So I should probably get on that really, really soon. Um, and I think here too, one of my buttons, it's probably that one doesn't have, there we go, keyboard um, in, you know, it's silly of me, but I threw this together really fast. And you can see that when I tab onto that, nothing actually changes, but if I hover, it is actually changing the state. So I am going to want to fix a couple of these things up in, you know, ASAP pretty much. Um, so it's just a really nice way that you can run an accessibility audit on your site. It's not going to be perfect at all. Um, it's, but it will flag some contract. It will flag some issues for you. So it could be a nice quick win, uh, for at least the, you know, the low hanging fruit, which I think is the one thing that we can take responsibility for. Even if you're not an accessibility expert, anything that makes it easier is always awesome. Uh, one thing you could do also is once you're finished testing is you can just turn off the accessibility features. I sort of recommend it. Um, just because it does affect the performance of other developer tools and should be turned off when not in use. <laughs> there you go. And that's really just scratching the surface. I've also looked at the Grid Inspector in another video. If you're going to be learning Grid, you have to be using Firefox's Grid Inspector. There's literally no other way. You're just going to be beating yourself on the head if not. So uh, you can always check out that video if you want on how the Grid Inspector works because it's amazing. Um, but that, that first thing that I looked at, honestly, if I was brand new to CSS, that would have saved me so much time. It's just the fact that you just go, oh, I, I'm not crazy. That should have worked, but it's not working because of this good reason why it doesn't. That's And even suggestions on what you know how to fix it. That's wild, that's really, really cool. So if you are learning CSS, if you're getting into CSS, or you're just writing a lot of CSS and you know, occasionally we make silly mistakes, 
Firefox's dev tools are the place to be. If you have any other cool tips or tricks, please leave them down in the comments below on other things people can learn from and get other ideas and cool things that you can do with the dev tools. And if you'd like a deeper dive in any of the functions that I looked at in this video or other ones, please let me know in the comments below as well and we can always dive into one of those. Thank you very much for watching. If you watched all of this and you liked what you saw and you haven't yet subscribed, please do consider subscribing. As usual, a massive thank you to all my patrons for all their support. It is greatly appreciated. Thank you guys so very much. We are going through some really interesting times now. I didn't want to talk about it earlier in the video. I'm not here to give you advice. I'm not a professional. The only thing I can say is listen to the professionals that are out there. Please try and stay safe, wash your hands, and until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.